now here you are in the last Sunday of 2020. I shouldn't have to cheer lead you. I shouldn't have to cheer lead you to celebrate God for the fact that you still alive. But I thank God I'm still alive. Still got partial my partial right mind. No partial. You know, my knees hurt every once in a while. I'm getting I'm getting older, Pastor Ravon. I'm getting up there. <laughs> but I'm alive. Take a deep breath in. Let it out. You're alive. You're alive. Maybe your life wasn't as dangerous as some other people, but the truth is anything could have happened. You could have got hit by a bus. Your anything could have happened. But you're alive. That's worthy of giving God glory. That's worthy of giving God praise. I don't have to look to my left or my right. In fact, that's how runners trip anyway. Looking at people over here and over here. Runners look straight ahead. Ask anybody who ever been a runner. They look straight ahead. You don't, you lose time. You break down your aerodynamics. Looking like this. You change the trajectory of, scientifically. You're trying to keep yourself small. Oh, Lord, that's, that sounds biblical. If I humble myself, then he'll exalt me. If I exalt myself, he'll humble me. I'm trying to keep myself small so I don't look to the left or the right. I just know, God, look, he did it for me. He kept me. He, he preserved me. Thank you, Jesus. You made it through this crazy year. This unbelievable year. And you are alive. Can you just, can you just raise your hand and just say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I know I'm going on and on, but I, I, I don't want to get into some message and make you miss the message that is your life. Make you miss the sermon that is your life. You're alive. Thank you, God, I'm alive. Thank you, God, for life. Thank you, God, for life. Thank you for the breath in my lungs. Involuntary. Thank you for the beating of my heart. Involuntary. The synapses of my mind. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, and I will forever give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. As long as I got breath in my lungs, as long as I could use my hands, if I couldn't clap my hands, I'd stomp my feet. If I couldn't stomp my feet, I'd, I'd lift my voice. If I couldn't lift my voice, I'd jump around like crazy. I, I would do whatever, whatever you have to praise God with. Take 15 seconds and just say, thank you, Jesus. 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 Sufficiently life eternally overflow, overwhelm more than I could dream you're giving me. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. You can have your seat. We'll get into this. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for being at God Chasers today. Thank you to the band. They, they did their good work today, right? They did the good work today. Thank y'all so much for your... Y'all can do better than that. What a, what a, what a smattering of applause that was. Come on, now. Um, thank you to the worship team. Thank you to, uh, y'all saw Carrie step in today. She's here. I love that there's so many gifted people here that we could just say, okay, we short. Come here, you. Come here. I'm calling LT up next time. Okay, we short. We need a singer. <laughs> I'm going to call Roxanne up here. We short. <laughs> to play the bass. We need, we need a bass player. <laughs> Pray, give, give me your hands. I'm gonna lay hands on your hands. <laughs> That's called impartation. Okay, all right, I'm kidding. Uh, then thank you so much to uh, Yvonne and Pam and, and Carrie. Thank you so much. 
Um, and for those of you guys who are usually YouTube people, um, we had a little technical difficulty this morning. We couldn't go live on YouTube. Um, blame YouTube, don't blame us. But uh, we're just glad that, you're, that you logged off YouTube and jumped on Facebook, that you didn't just start eating around on YouTube. Thank you, Jesus. You know, some of the people we, uh, we get in trouble. Oh, God chases don't work. Let me get, see who. Um, <laughs> Let me see what church is live on. Okay, but I'm, we're grateful for whoever's on live with us today. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm being silly today, but I, I, I'm really sort of grateful. I'm not sort of, I'm jovial today because God is good, man. He's faithful. He's been faithful. And uh, if you haven't seen it yet, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Uh, we talked about this a little bit. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, but I, I just want to make you understand something. Now, the Bible says, in the beginning, I'm not going to preach the whole Bible, but let's just start in the beginning. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and uh, the Bible says darkness moved upon the face of the deep, and the spirit moved on the surface of the waters. And the Bible says that the spirit said, let there be light. Easy concept, right? We get light. He says, let there be light. And the Bible says he, he saw the light. He separated the light from the darkness. He called the darkness night, the light time day and the darkness night. Uh, he called the light morning, the darkness evening. He said, and then there was the evening and the morning. And that was the first. Okay, Y'all with me? And he called that the first day. Okay. We say the earth was made in seven days. But now if you go down to about day four, something significant happens. The Bible says that he made the sun. He made a, a greater light and a lesser light. That was the, the sun and the moon. He separated a greater light and a lesser light. He put the sun in the, for the daytime and for markings of seasons and times and seasons and times. And he called that the fourth day. Wait a minute. He made the light on the first day. He made the sun on the fourth day. But the sun is how you count days. Are y'all with me today? So, so you count days by the rotation of the earth on its axis and its visibility to the sun. So that means how you count days and how God counts days. It's too deep. Okay, I think I lost somebody. You count days based on your perspective to that big shiny thing in the sky. But God created that big shiny thing in the sky, but he didn't create it till four days after he started his work. How does God count days? How does God count days? How does God count days? This is why we, we presume, we say the earth was made in seven days. Technically, the earth was made in six days. He rested on seven days. But we say the earth was made in six days, but, but we don't know how long those days were. Because the way we count days, the way he counts days, two different things. I said, Dante, what are you talking about? I'm talking about it may not be over. It may not be the end. Here's my punchline already. This is, it may not be over. It may not be the end. Maybe the way you count and the way God counts is two different situations. And people counted you out. People called it over for you. The time clock went out. It went down. Three, two, one. It, 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 the, clock, the time clock went down for you. But God said, no, that, that's not how I count days. So it may feel like the end for you. Lord have mercy. It may feel like the end of a thing. But if, how many of you know sometimes the end of a thing is just the beginning of a new thing? And what you think is the end, God said, no, no, no. It's not even the end. I'm still working some things out. I, 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 you think it's over, but it's not over. You think it's done, but it's not done. I'm still working some things out. And I want you to just think about the fact that how many times you said, oh, no, this is the last thing. This is the last time. The last time I got my heart broke like this. This is the last. Oh, I'm done. There was some stuff. This is the last time I'm going to let them talk to me like this. Oh, this is the last time I'm going to go through this. And 
truth is, you went through it a few more times after that. Because we hard here. We got to learn. <laughs> you got you going to learn today. <laughs> That's what's going to happen. But, but understanding something, that what you call the end of a thing, God does not pronounce it that way. God doesn't see it in the way that you see it. He doesn't count time in the way that you count time. So is it possible that the people who counted you out are wrong? Is it possible that the people who said it, was, it wasn't going to work out for you are wrong? Is it possible? I know some of y'all are getting up in age. You're getting up in age and you're saying, God, you, you, the promises of God is, is getting short, Lord. And God said, no, no, it's short for you, but it's not short for me. I am my own time God. Yes, I am. I'm just, don't give me the preaching 1480 radio station over here. My granny used to listen to it. They played the same three songs over and over again, it seemed like. But the one song they, they play, I'm coming up on the rock. I be thinking y'all young, but y'all not young. Y'all old in here. Y'all, how y'all know that song? <laughs> how y'all how how know that song? They, and, and they would play this, they would play this other song. They would say, uh, I'm, I'm. <laughs> they were playing. Well, I, I lost it. It was only three songs. I didn't write them down because I knew them in my heart. All right, I'm going on. I done lost those songs. I lost both of them. Anyway. <laughs> but one of the things that they would be, t one, of the, one of the things that they would be talking about in these songs is just, I, 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 I just, I got it. Ah, oh, thank you, Lord. <laughs> I don't feel no Boy, y'all old, y'all old. <laughs> yeah, I cut. Y'all know the Mary Mary version. If I said, if I sung the Mary 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 version, everybody know that. <laughs> I just can't give. There we go. Y'all know that. <laughs> come too far, but get, come back, come back, come back. All right, I messed this all up. I had it. It was going to be so good, Tabby. I planned this all the way out. Anyway, <laughs> my, my point is that God still has time. He's still working on you. He's still, and if you give him time, hear, hear me right here. If you give him time, he will work out whatever you think needs to be worked out. He, he will do it. He has the ability and the propensity to work out things that you think is too late for you got to understand, you got to understand how chronology works in the kingdom. If you don't understand how chronology works in the kingdom, see, even the way, the, the way you read your Bible. Some of y'all start at Genesis. That's why you never got through it. That's why you got, boy, you got through Genesis. Genesis is decently exciting. Jesus, don't, it's no, don't disrespect to Genesis. Somebody said decently. I mean, it is. Some good stories in there. Exodus is, is on fire. You read through Exodus, you're like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm making tracks, PD. I read Genesis and Exodus in like two weeks. And you get to Leviticus, the book of law. And all of a sudden, it's like, don't eat bugs and cockroaches. Don't eat shrimp. You're like, oh, no. I, didn't, I fell asleep on that part. I uh, don't eat lobsters and shrimps. Well, come on. I thought I was supposed to get the fat of the land, PD. Now, <laughs> you, you then don't get to numbers. <laughs> you get to numbers. They, they start just counting people, counting houses. This house belongs to that house. And these children, these are the fathers who belong to the house of Dan. <laughs> You're like, PD, I'm not supposed to be a Christian. <laughs> This would be easy. I would have a grace for this if I was supposed to be. 
No, you start reading your Bible in the New Testament. Okay? You, you read the new promise first. Then you reference the old promise for what's happening in the new pro Oh, I just messed up. I just wrecked some theology right here. I felt, I felt the spirit of click off right now. Somebody was like, no, no. Dude. Jesus, Jesus said, I am the fulfillment of the law. He said, all of the law, everything is, for, is found in me. I'm the fulfillment of it. And so you read through, you read through Genesis. You, uh, excuse me, you read through the New Testament first because the New Testament is what, is, is what will teach you why the Old Testament matters. But we have a chronology problem because we can't, we don't count the way God counts. We don't count the way God counts. And I want to talk about that a little bit today, but I, I, I want to do that from the perspective of, of, of word. Somebody say word. word. Look at your neighbor and just say words matter. Word. There's nothing more powerful than a word. There's nothing more powerful. There's nothing more engaging than a word. I need you to get that. Hebrews 4 and 12 says the word, the word of God is more powerful than any two-edged sword. It said it can divide the bone from the marrow. I only knew one person that could do that. That was my brother Andre. <laughs> He eat chicken and divide the... Okay. That's all. None of my good jokes is working to me. <laughs> he, like, he, bro, he eat the marrow? Yeah. That brother could... Anyway, the word is more powerful than any two-edged sword. Dividing the, the bone from the marrow. John 17, 17 says it like this. Your word is truth in a day and age when everybody is getting their own truth. When everybody is getting their own word. When everybody's getting it themselves. They, they, the word of God is the only thing that matters. It is the only real truth. The Bible says that heaven and earth will pass away. God's word will exist. It will, it will stand. It will go forward. There's nothing more powerful than a word. But I need you to understand something. That there, are, there is a correlating thing to go along with every word. And it is called a response. So words are issued and then response is supposed to happen. Now, what happens for us in the modern day church is that we go to church and we get words. We receive words. We take notes for words. Let me help you right here. In 2021, there's going to be a note-taking season for you. There's going to be a note-taking season for you. Some of y'all have forgotten words that would have got you through hard seasons. When you could have just referenced those words. When you could have went back to your own notes. Because that is the power of the word. But, but understand something. that The Bible says heaven and earth will pass away. The word will not. But everything on heaven and earth is responding to a word. Remember that. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Earth was our form and void. So everything is responding to a word. Say that. Everything is responding to a word. Everything is responding to a word. So if there is no response, then the word does come back void. God said, I sent out my word. It was supposed to heal you. It was supposed to refresh you. It was supposed to. But if you, if there's no response to the word. So there has to be a response. There has to be a necessary response to every word. Now, my question to you for 2021 is, are you going to respond to the word of God over your life? Are you going to respond to what God says about you? Are you going to be able to respond? Or are you going to go through it like you went through this year? Just listening. But not hearing. The Bible says faith come by hearing. So it's hearing, 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 hearing is the responsive action to sound. Are y'all with me today? PD, you, 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 are you going somewhere? Yes, I am. But I need you to understand. What God is trying to do in your life is going to require a response. It's going to require an echo. It's going to require you to respond to what God is saying in your life. So God told you, a long time ago, he gave you assignment. He gave you message a long time ago. And you haven't responded to the word. And that's why it seems like God is quiet in your life. That's why it seems like he hasn't said anything else. But just God doesn't repeat himself. He speaks. And then he waits. 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 But you know what my problem is sometimes? Uh, uh, I'm getting in trouble. <laughs> 
Tabby, it's okay. <laughs> Start the clock. Uh, my, my, my problem is that we, 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 we will pray for a demon to be released from somebody's life. And we start to pray, and we increase in volume and intensity as if, if we say something louder, yeah. the demon will respond better. I've been in places, I've been in houses of worship where all of us are in ah, the Lord said, release, release, release. But the same thing I'm saying, if I just say release. Come out. You got to go right now. You got to go. You got to move right now. Get out. Get out of this place. It's the, it's the same power. It's the same power. So, so the question is, what are, we, what are we declaring is a response to the word of God? Is it intensity? Is it, is, is it drama? Is it, what, what is a response, a real response to the word of God? Well, I want to use a couple of Bible stories to just give you a, a, a real biblical response to the, to the word that comes from God. Now, the first one, uh, and forgive me, I'm going to switch the chronology just for a second. Some of y'all going to say he didn't say these in order. I keep telling you, you out of order anyway. <laughs> I want to switch the chronology just for a second. We, we can start in Luke chapter 8. In Luke chapter 8, uh, there are many things happening in this chapter, but one of the most significant things that, that, that happened, did I tell you the name of my message is Last Minute Miracles? Yeah. Okay, all right. One of the most significant things that happens in Luke chapter 8 is with a man named Jairus. Somebody say Jairus. Jairus. So, so, so say it louder. Say Jairus. Jairus. One of the things that happens is that Jairus has a daughter. And his daughter has died. His daughter is dead. Now, I need you to understand, there are, there are many ceremonies associated with the death of a Jewish person. There are, there are ceremonies associated with the death of a Jewish person. No, one of the first things is, when a person dies, the whole family comes to the house. Before we do anything, we got to get the whole family. And that's why when, when you hear that somebody is dying, people start to make pilgrimage to the house because they want to be in the last seconds of that life and they want to celebrate as a family a life well lived yeah, yeah. before they start a process of mourning. The second process is that they bathe, they clean the body, they clean the person, yeah. they wrap them, and then they do what they call sit shiva. Somebody say shiva. They, they still do this now. Jewish people still do this now. What they would do is the whole family would stay at your house for seven days after a funeral. I'm just going to keep it 100 with y'all. If I lose my daughter, I don't want to deal with y'all for seven days. I just lost my daughter. <laughs> I don't want to, look, there, nobody want to look. I, I, I don't want to deal with my family for seven days after I just lost my baby. Y'all need to go somewhere else. Find somewhere else to be during this time. I need to personally mourn. But what they would do is they, they were supposed to be there and mourn with you and help you. So these are, the, these are the processes. The first process is the first process is that they show up. The second process is that they wash. The third process is they sit. Okay, they show up. They wash. They sit. They show up. They wash. They sit. Nobody's supposed to say a thing. During this whole time, it's supposed to be silent. Silent. And you sit in silence. Sit, shiver. And so what happens is Jairus' daughter is at the first stage. She's at the first stage. And all you're supposed to do is just show up. And they tell Jesus, they say, Jairus' daughter is about to die. Now, we don't know. Some people assume that Jesus was related to Jairus in some, in some way or whatever. We don't, we don't have any uh, real theological backup to prove that. But we, what he did was he started on his way to her house. He started on his way to her house. How many of you know sometimes, though, Jesus take a long time to do stuff? And on his way to her house, he was healing other people, preaching in the synagogue, doing all this stuff on his way. They said, come quick. Jairus' daughter is about to die. Jesus said, I'll be there in a minute. I'm, I'll be there shortly. Hold on a little while longer. Help is on the way. And, and, so, and so what happens is, what, what, where are we, PD? What happens is they come to Jesus while he... 
doing whatever, turning water into wine, all this other stuff. And they say, Jesus, don't worry about it. She died. Jesus, don't worry about it. It's all good. It's over. Jesus, don't worry about it. I'm going to always be broke. Mm. Wow. Jesus, don't worry about it. I'm never going to have somebody who love me and who take care of me and who we can partner and live our lives together. Jesus, don't worry about it. I'm, I'm done praying for things that you promised me uh, back in 2005 and in 2010. I, I, I'm just settled. Yeah. Jesus, don't worry about it. You don't have to come anymore. But how many of you know that when Jesus sets his purpose to something, Lord have mercy, Jesus. If he say he on his way, he on his way. He, if he say he on his way, th thank you, Jesus, that I serve a God who on his way. Chelsea, when he say he on his way, I can hear his footsteps moving. I can hear him coming on his way to me. And no matter how dire the situation looks, thank you, Jesus. No matter how sad the situation looks, I feel like Jesus is on his way. I done prayed and prayed and prayed about this. I've been asking God to heal me. I've been asking God to help me. I've been asking God, and I haven't seen the sign, but I just feel like he He's on his way to me. How many of you serve a God who just, he on his way? He, he might be taking his time while on others that are calling. Do not pass me by. We serve a God who is on the, on the way. On the way. And so even though they say, no, you, there's no need for you to come. My situation is too dire. It's all over. Jesus finds his way to Jairus' daughter. Notice that we don't get the name of Jairus' daughter. I'll, I'll deal with that in a second. But when we talk about biblical characters, whenever you don't see a name, put your name there. Whenever there's not a name, put, put your name in the place. And so we get to Jairus' daughter who, who doesn't have a name. Put your situation, your circle, name your situation. That, that's what it means when you don't see a biblical character's name. It means you can put your situation right there. That means that your, your dire time, God is on his way to you. Your, your hard situation, God is on his way to you. It, it, it might just be a last minute miracle. She's in the first stage where she dies. She hasn't been washed yet. She hasn't been wrapped yet. There hasn't been a, a, a mourning period yet. And Jesus finds his way to the house. And then, Pastor Kevin, something significant happens. Jesus looks at the little girl and he says, baby girl, get up. Now, some people will say that the miracle was in Jesus showing up. Some people will say that the miracle was in Jesus speaking up. But I think the miracle was in the baby getting up. Some people will say that the miracle was that Jesus showed up. Some people would say that the miracle was that he actually spoke into, and then the miracle happens when, Jesus, when God speaks. The, again, animation happens, and all of a sudden when God speaks, so, something happens. But the word without a response is useless. A word without a response is useless. It doesn't matter how much I yell and scream and tell you God's going to do it, God's going to fix it, he's going to change it, you don't respond. Word without a response is you. It don't matter how much you, you, your parents tell you, don't do this, don't do that. Be careful right here. A word without a response is useless. You'll say, I don't remember you telling me that. Yeah, because you didn't respond. A word without a response is useless. And a lot of times we keep saying, God, I haven't seen your favor. I haven't seen your blessing. I haven't seen the miracles. Pastor Dante said it was going to be miracles. I want to see the miracles. I want to see the miracles. And God said, You never responded. The word was released. You never responded. The Bible says that he spoke to that young lady and he said, get up. God will always come to you with a get up. He always going to come to you with a get up. God, God, God says two things uh, most prevalently to you in the Bible. The first one is this. Y'all give me another mic. The first one is this. The first thing is do not fear. The second thing is get up. Some of y'all, you, you, you got lost somewhere between do not fear and get up. Do not fear, come on. Do not fear and get up. Rick, this is uh, 24. Get me right, please. 
Do not fear and, and, and get up. You got to know when, when God is telling you to get up. When you're not any longer supposed to stay in the situation that you've been in. Some of y'all, you heard the word, but you never moved from the mess that you was in. And I'm here for a last minute miracle. Um, um, let's rewind back a little bit to Luke chapter 7. Luke chapter 7, right around verse 17. Uh, my, uh, <laughs> there is a, a, a beautiful story that happens right in here. The first is uh, J. Iris' daughter. The second is the, the son of a widow. We can get that slide up. Uh, we, uh, the, the widow of Nain's son. Now, he's in the second stage of death. So Jairus' daughter, she was uh, she 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 had just died, but he's being he's being carried out to the burial place. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He's already been washed, he's already been wrapped, and he's been carried out into a burial place. Man, I'm trying to help y'all. I'm gonna get out of here. He, he he's been washed and wrapped, and he's so he's a little bit further along in his despair than Jairus' daughter was. And Jesus come out like, oh, y'all want to give me another challenge, huh? And he sees this young lady. Now, we know that he doesn't know this young lady, this widow. But the Bible says, and I need y'all to hear me right here. This man is dead. He wrapped up, tied up, tangled up. He, he, he done. They, they, they are walking to his burial place to bury him. And Jesus doesn't see the son. He sees the mama. Lord, have mercy. He sees the mama that's praying about her child. He sees the mama that's lost in despair. He sees the mama who cares about her child, who, who, who's heartbroken because all she had was is right here on this cart. Some of y'all been in situations where all you had was dead on this cart. Everything you had, everything you prayed for, dead on the cart. And they're carrying it out, and it's all over. They did the count. It's over. The situation's over. The romance is over. The relationship is over. It's dead on the cart. Or maybe you have children who are wayward, lost, gone. You taught them the word, but they dead on the cart. Spiritually, dead on the cart. They don't even believe in God. They can't even talk. You can't even have a conversation with them about God. Without them getting mad. Yeah. Dead on the cart. And Jesus doesn't see the son. He sees the mother. And the Bible says he's filled with compassion. For the mother, man, I want to help you right here. Yeah. You've been praying for your child. Maybe I'm just speaking to one yeah. or two yeah. people. Maybe yeah. they're just yeah. online. But you've yeah. been praying about your children yeah. and, and wondering what's going to happen with them and how they're going to make. Yeah. Jesus' heart is filled with compassion for you. Yeah. He cares about you just as much as you care about that baby. God cares about you. Amen. Amen. I'll give you a, 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 a. I got to a place. I was riding in my car one day. Commercial. I was riding in my car one day. No music. No nothing. Sometimes you just need to be alone with God. Started praying about my children. I was really. We were. We were getting into a dark place. I'll just be honest with y'all. We were getting into a dark place. We were dead. I, because I didn't, I love my dad to death, but I didn't grow up with my dad in the house. So my children had to experience Father OJT. Learning how to be a dad. While they're there, I'm learning how to be a dad. And what I thought was powerful is that I would teach them aggression. I was like, they need to be aggressive. That's what the lions do. We hunt. We're aggressive. We're aggressive. And then they got to a certain age where they start being aggressive with me. And I was like, oh, no, be gentle. Be gentle. Humble yourself. It's difficult to reverse that. And I realized I had taught them all aggression but no humility. It was getting to a weird place. And I was in my car, Pastor Ravon, and I was praying, and I just broke into tears. Like, I was so, so bad that I had to pull over my car on the side of the road. I remember this like it was yesterday. And I'm crying, and it's vivid, and, and, and God said this. He said, you think you love them 
more than I love them? You think you're more concerned about them than I am? And then in, in true God fashion with me, that was it. He didn't say nothing else. And I just sat there in silence. <laughs> feeling dumb <laughs> because he said he who watches over Israel neither sleeps nor slumbers you think I'm not watching you think I'm not paying attention to them I see what you don't see I see the parts in them that you don't that you're not able to see you disappointed about what you do see I'm telling you I'm covering what you don't see it's covered because of the compassion of the father he said I'll resurrect the son because of those, so who, who in here is resurrected because of the compassion of somebody else? Your grandmama, your mama. Who, who in here has been resurrected because of the compassion? Sometimes I, I talk about what God has done in my life and how he spared me, but I know my mama was praying for me. I know my, I know my grandma was praying for me. I know they were praying. I know that there are situations I, only prayer would have got me through that. And because of the compassion of the mother. The Bible says Jesus walks over to the son. He's wrapped up. I like this picture right here because they show Jesus taking the wrapping off the kid. Now, this might not be biblically correct. You might have to take your own wrapping off. You might have to remove your own bandages. That's the difficult part. You might have to remove your own bandages. The Bible says that, that, that Jesus goes over to the child Goes over to the son, and he says, hey, young man, get up. Some people say that the miracle was in Jesus showing up. Other people say the miracle was in Jesus speaking up. But I wonder if the miracle was in the young man getting up. Every word requires a response. Every word of God in your life is going to require a response. It's a miracle. It's not magical. Only magic requires that you don't do anything. That you're confounded. It's a miracle. It's not magical. It's going to require a response from you. The third story is in John. And in John, and, and I, will, I will read to you this whole chapter, because it's the whole chapter of John chapter 11. In John chapter 11, they come to you, they come to Jesus and they say, hey man, your friend, Lazarus. They say it like this, the one you love yeah. is about to die. Yeah. The one you love, why would they say the one you love? Because yeah. Jesus loved Lazarus. Yeah. Jesus loves Lazarus. And if I really wanted to draw this out, I would show you the picture of the church here. Because the Bible says that, that Lazarus has two sisters. It's Mary and Martha. Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. Say that. I'm just making sure y'all wasn't asleep. Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. And Jesus loves them. He loves them so much that they live in Bethany. He lives in Jerusalem. And he walks to their house on a regular basis. He walks to their house on a regular basis. Some people say it could be up to two days. He walks to their house. That's how much Jesus loves Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. Mary, we know Mary. We talked about Mary a little while ago. We, we think, we correlate these two Marys, that this was probably the same Mary, Mary of Magdala. And that Mary, and that Mary had been uh, caught in adultery. She had been thrown down in front of Jesus. Remember, this is the first message I preached in this miracle message. And, 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 and she has been found to have favor with the Lord, so much so that Jesus comes to her house on a regular basis. And when he it comes, she's so much of a worshiper. Pam, she, she's so much of a worshiper that she, she breaks open her oil. Yeah, yeah, she yeah. pours it out on Jesus. The Bible says she cries and she wipes it with her hair. Yeah, yeah. She's a worshiper. She loves worshiping. Yeah. She's given her most expensive yeah. gifts to Jesus. She's poured it out. She can't wait to get to a place with Jesus where she can worship. And honestly, it, she would walk into rooms that she wasn't qualified to be in. Because yeah. women couldn't walk into a room with, full of men like that. She was a worshiper. She loved to worship. She loved to worship. She loved to worship. Martha was different. Martha was a worker. 
So Martha would be cooking and cleaning. The Bible said while everybody was doing whatever they was doing, Martha was, she was making sure the house was good. She was taking care of the house. She was serving Jesus like this. Any, anything I can do to serve you? Is there any way I can do? She was maybe, maybe she was uh, more like Pastor Adriana. She was like, uh, I got I to gotta take your temperature and spray your hands before you come around Jesus. <laughs> Make sure you're not bringing the vid in here with you. You know we got the Savior in here, man. You can't be bringing the vid in here. Mary worships. Martha works. But Lazarus is Jesus' friend. Lazarus, he's the one who's sick. He's Jesus' friend. I think sometimes, Pastor Niles, in church, we give too much credit to Mary. Because she could sing. We give too much credit to Martha. Because she know where all the stuff is in the church. She can help you find the stuff. Jesus' concern is Lazarus. Because Lazarus is sick. The church loves Marys. We can't wait to get them in. Get them on stage. Let them get in front of everybody. We love Martha's. We can't wait to put them to work. Put them in planning center. Let's get them going. If you don't know what Planderson is, you need to see me after church. <laughs> you ain't been working. <laughs> we can't wait to get a Mary. We can't wait to get a Martha. But Lazarus is the sick one. The Bible says he's the one who Jesus loves. I don't doubt that Jesus loves Mary. I don't doubt that Jesus loves Martha. But we, we've said that before. If, if, if all the houses are safe except the one that's on fire, Jesus goes to the one that's on fire. So, so, so all houses don't matter if one of them's on fire. The house on fire matters. Jesus, the one you love, is dying. Jesus continues on doing some other stuff because he's on the way. He's on the way. He's got an agenda. But it's so much so that the, this, even the disciples look at him, uh, even, the brain, even the disciples look at him and say, yo, man, they told you Lazarus was sick. You going you to make a move? You got to go. You got to go. And Jesus said, one more hand on the domino table. That's one more, one more. We're going to play one more game. And then he starts to make his way to Lazarus. And on his way, just like in, in the story with Jairus' daughter, they run to Jesus and they say, no, it's good. He died. You can come sit shiver. But he, he died. It's okay. Don't worry. But Jesus said, no, the way you count time and the way I count time, it's too he even told his disciples, he said, I let this happen so God could get glory. Lord, have mercy. How, what, 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 what if, what if whatever happened, he let happen so he could get glory? What if whatever happened, he allowed to happen so he could get glory? Lord, have mercy, Jesus. The Bible says, he said, I let it happen so that I could get glory. And then he went uh, over to the tomb. Now, some of y'all already get the punchline here, but I, 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 I'll regale you with it anyway. He goes over to the tomb. It's, it's so interesting, Pastor Woods, that he's at an even deeper stage. Remember, the first one, she had just died. The second one, he was wrapped they were taking him to be buried. But at this point, they sit and shiver. They sit and shiver. The stone is in front of them. They've accepted. They're, they're not even mourning anymore. Lord, have mercy. What is the promise of God over your life that you stop crying about? That you're not even mourning anymore. What is that promise? When God said, I'm on my way. And Jesus gets there, and it's so, I think it's so interesting that there is a stone in front of his grave. And Jesus says, roll away the stone. Now, hear me, hear me right here. I need you to understand this. Jesus doesn't roll away the stone. But Lazarus has some people in his life that will help him. Yeah. 
Lord have mercy, Jesus. Do you have anybody in your life? Do you have some stone rollers in your life? Do you have some people who will help you roll some stuff away in your life? You need some people in your life that will help you push some stuff away. And then Jesus says, Lazarus, come out. Now some people say the miracle was in Jesus showing up. Other people say it was in Jesus speaking up. But if Jesus showed up and he spoke up, but Lazarus didn't carry his tail out of that thing, out of that grave, then there would have been no miracle. What am I trying to tell you? That maybe you, maybe Jesus has already shown up and maybe Jesus has already spoken up, but there is no miracle until you get up. And I'm calling you for Lazarus, come out of your grave, come out of your sad situation, come out of your difficult depression, come out of your anxiety, come out of your broken place. This is the place God has already shown up. God has already spoken up. Now it's time for you to get up. We got, we sit, we sat and soured all 2020. Mary told Jesus, she said, you know what she told Jesus? She said, by now he stinks. That's how much, that's how much sitting around we done done. By now he stinketh. That's a King Jimmy version. <laughs> By now he's stinking. But I want I, even even that dark situation. Hear my heart right here. Even that bad situation that you think is is it, it's, it's over. You think it's degraded, too 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 bad to the point where it'll never recover. I hear the spirit of the Lord saying right now, it's time for you to get up out of that situation. Get up out of that circumstance. Get up out of that. Get up out of that. Get up out of that. And the, and the Bible says that he just starts coming out. Now, now understand something. He was completely wrapped. So it's possible, Pastor Ravon, that he couldn't, that, that this picture is incorrect. It's possible. See, in this picture, his feet are loose. But some of y'all been in such a situation that you're, nothing's loose. No, nothing's loose. You're, even your feet not loose. You're completely tied up, wrapped up. But I'm telling you now, I don't care what you got to do. If you got to crawl out of there, if you got to get, you need to respond to the word of God that's spoken over your life. If you got to do the worm out of there, whatever you got to do to get out of that dark place, whatever you got to do to get out of that depression, Jesus has shown up. Jesus has spoken up. It's time for you to get up. On the last Sunday of 2020, it's time for you to get up. You've been on quarantine too long. It's time for you to get up. It's time for you to get up. It's time for you to get up. God did not intend for you to sour. You've been festering that old thing so long, people can't even bring up the old person around you. It makes you sick and you'll be, no. <laughs> they can't even bring up the old situation around you. No, it's time for you to get up from that. It's time for you to get up. Jairus' daughter, get up. The widow's son, get up. Lazarus, Jesus' friend, get up. It's time for you to get up. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you. We give you glory and honor. Lord, I'm praying right now, Lord Jesus, for all the people who've been down, God, downtrodden, sick, depressed, Lord Jesus. I'm praying for a last-minute miracle for them, God. God, the way they count time is not the way you count time. So although they think it's over, God, you telling them the best is yet to come, God. Lord, we believe in you. We trust you, God. We give you glory and honor. There's nobody like you, God. You've been faithful, God. You've been faithful, God. You've been faithful, God. Even in 2020. Crazy year, weird year. And you were still good. We still experienced joy. We still experienced love, Lord Jesus. From friends and family. We still, we still experienced love. 
Lord, and even though we may have lost some people, we can, we can count the blessings we have, Lord Jesus. I'm thanking you for being good. And I'm calling our church to get up. I'm calling our church to get up. I'm calling our church to get up. I know some people are broken, God. Some people, they couldn't get online church. They, they just, they couldn't take it. They couldn't deal with online church. I get it. Here's the season now, God. Just calling them to get up. Come out of their grave clothes. Go higher. Go higher in you, Lord.